This is your Barbados Today evening news update for Friday, January 28th. Coconut vendor Stephen Marshall of Quakers Road, Belmont Road, St. Michael, fell to his death on Friday while picking coconuts in the close-knit community of Walk Springs in Thomas this morning. Marshall, the son of popular gospel singer Sister Margarita Marshall, was one of two men picking coconuts when his tree snapped just below him, sending him and the top of the tree to the ground. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector Roddy Innes said Marshall fell approximately 40 to 50 feet. The Straw family members were unable to speak at the scene. However, close friend Anthony Price is devastated by the loss of his friend. There were two climbers, one to the tree to the left, one to the tree to the right. Approximately, I was standing up by the tree to the left with the other climber, assisting him. So uh, the deceased was in the tree to the right, waiting on me to come over to assist him. Then all of a sudden, I hear a snap, and when he looked side of me, he was on the ground. I was like shocked. So everything happened so fast, I couldn't believe it. I was very devastated because all we live together and now we got to go before him. So, as you say, nobody knows when these things can happen. But still sorry, because he's my good friend. You understand? And we, were we will miss him, to tell you the truth. Another close acquaintance, Selwyn Maynard, was shaken by the tragedy. It's just unexplainable that we pick ones for so much years and just to see top of a coconut tree fall off with a man. It's just unexplainable, and not even a tall tree, just to... We had guys that fall from trees already, I fall from trees. Even the same Stephen fall from trees already, but led into this, this magnitude, not done like that, yeah. It's just, it's just a tragedy. Meanwhile, Inspector Innes again cautioned Barbadians not to circulate photos of people's deaths on social media. He warned that this could be traumatic for loved ones, especially if they have not been formally notified of the death. And we continue to, 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 to literally beg um, individuals and members of the public not to do that because it doesn't serve any good to anybody, especially those grieving family members. It's not good to see your loved ones all over social media and circumstances like that. So again, we are continuing to appeal to those persons to desist from the, that, that behavior. It's not good, not palatable, and certainly it's, it's not fair to the, to the family as well. A St. John man died today in a freak accident at Thornberry Hill Christchurch. 30-year-old Jamal Omar Beckles of Miller's Land near Messiah Street, St. John, was under a vehicle making repairs when it fell on him. One man who was at the scene told Barbados today he was among a few other men who attempted to rescue the victim. I was coming down the, um, the road there, we call Breezy Hill, and I was flagged down by a lady. So I don't know what, exactly what she needed. So I just, you know, I stopped and to, to ask what's going on. And she told me the, uh, the guys down there want some help. And I carried her to on the, on the guy there. So I just went over there, saw the guys trying to lift the car. What I did, I got the jack, raised the car, so the guys could actually lift it further up, all the gentlemen, and then we pulled them out, and that's about it. The Democratic Labour Party is being warned against allowing the silliness of the past election campaign to deny them representation in the Senate. Attorney General Dale Marshall said in an interview with Barbados Today that the newly elected government has no intention of selecting opposition senators. He said the administration was seeking to ensure beyond a shadow of a doubt that the two Senate seats are chosen by the DLP. I am amused really by, by the mouthings of, of, of the interim president of the Democratic Labour Party because in order for them to benefit from what the Prime Minister is proposing, they have to sit down and have a discussion with the government because it would require an amendment to the Constitution. Simple as that. The Constitution gives, the Constitution to this extent does not tell the President how or how to appoint or, or, or what interests need to be appointed. So really, um, it behooves the opposition to, to stand down a little bit and, and listen, because the constitution will have to be amended so as to say that the two quote-unquote opposition senators must be drawn from the party which had the most votes after the government. And I, I think I think that's, that, to me, it's a really simple issue. So 
all to say that the the gift is not always the gift. We're not we're not giving anything. We understand only too well that it is the appointment that is made by the president. We're not saying we will appoint anybody. That's a matter for the president. But what we're seeking to do is to establish certain parameters as to how she should exercise that discretion. And now for today's COVID-19 update, a total of 729 new cases, that's 347 males and 382 females, were identified from the 2,708 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory on Thursday. There were 120 persons in isolation facilities and 8,772 persons in home isolation. The number of lives lost to the viral illness is 277. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, the opposition Jamaica Labour Party tells the government it must step up action to bring down the country's spiraling crime rate. More on this report from Television Jamaica. The impact of crime on the economy is well known. In addition to the heft bill to fight crime, successive governments have had to deal with issues like loss of foreign investment. Then there are concerns about the loss of business due to the prevalence of extortion and theft. Opposition leader Mark Golding says if the country's crime problem isn't controlled, the hopes of having any real growth in the economy is only a pipe dream. It is a deep and complex problem which requires a multifaceted response. We accept that in dealing with communities which are torn by gang warfare where violence is out of control, the state's response must be strong, rapid and effective. He maintains that the answer lies with the passing of two pieces of legislation, the Enhanced Security Measures Act and the Firearms Act. And given the depth and depravity of our crime problem, it is in my opinion inexcusable that there has been this protracted delay in delivering these agreed commitments to help the country try and get on top of this crime problem. It is clear that more effective law enforcement is only a part of the solution to achieving the normalization of Jamaica's crime levels. For a complete solution, we need to comprehensively address the factors which lead to the high levels of violence in our society. Further afield, Russia said on Friday that it would not start a war in Ukraine, but warned that the U.S. and NATO have ignored its demands and left little room for compromise in the crisis. Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Friday the United States and NATO had not addressed Russia's main security demands in their standoff over Ukraine. But Moscow is ready to keep talking. That was Putin's first reaction to the U.S. and NATO responses to Russia's demands in a phone call with French President Emmanuel Macron. After weeks of personal public silence on the crisis in which Russia has massed troops near Ukraine, the Kremlin quoted Putin as telling Macron he would study the written responses provided by Washington and NATO this week before deciding on further action. It said attention was drawn to the fact that the US and NATO replies did not take into account Russia's principal concerns. Those include avoiding NATO expansion, not deploying offensive weapons near Russia's borders, and returning NATO military capabilities and infrastructure to how they were before former Warsaw Pact states in Eastern Europe joined. The United States and its allies have warned Putin that Russia will face tough economic sanctions if he attacks Ukraine. 
though there are divisions among Western countries over how to respond as Europe is dependent on Russia for energy supplies. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg said on Friday the Western military alliance was ready to increase its true presence in Eastern Europe. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.